The Russian railway production sector has undergone one of the most dramatic transformations in its modern history since February 2022. Western sanctions cut access to imported machinery, software, and components that were vital for rolling stock manufacturing. Yet instead of collapsing, the system adapted. Between 2022 and 2025, companies such as Russian Railways, Ural Vagon Zavod, Transmash Holding, and Ural Locomotives reorganized their operations to ensure full domestic production capability. The early sanctions of 2022 struck directly at the technological base of the industry. Imports of automation systems, management software, and traction electronics stopped almost overnight. When Siemens and Alstom withdrew, supply of advanced locomotive components ended. Russia had to assume full control of joint operations that had previously depended on Western input. Ural Locomotives, once partly managed with Siemens, became a fully Russian-owned company. The following months were described by Russian trade media as a period of emergency industrial mobilization. Engineers searched for domestic suppliers while production lines relied on, on leftover imported inventories. According to Russian transport analysts, by mid-2022, the overall output had dropped nearly 30%. Information technology faced a parallel crisis. Russian Railways developed its own digital platforms to replace banned Western software. By late 2022, the company announced that all foreign software had been removed. New domestic systems for operations management were deployed using Russian code and databases. Local firms such as Cognitive Pilot and Positive Technologies began providing cybersecurity and automation tools compatible with RZD's infrastructure. Freight wagon production suffered a sharp fall between 2022 and 2023. In early 2023, the Center for the Development of the Railway Transport Market reported a 14 to 15 percent decrease in total wagons produced, about 16,000 units in four months. Output initially plunged 27 percent in January, but stabilized later. Through 2024, recovery remained slow. Another 12% decline appeared in the first five months of 2025 compared to 2024, totaling around 30,000 carriages for the first half of the year. That number is far below the pre-crisis average of 2019 to 2021. Passenger bogey and locomotive output showed mixed results. In 2023, passenger bogies rose by 20%, diesel locomotives by nearly 40%, and electric locomotives by 12. Electric multiple units also grew 7%. Yet most of these gains came from state-funded renewal programs by RZD, not from private demand. This meant that many domestic plants still had unused capacity. By 2024, factories in Bryansk and Tiver faced overcapacity and weak private orders. Analysts noted that government support preserved jobs but erased business plans that once relied on exports. Russia had shifted from a diverse, export-driven market to a closed, state-supported model. Import substitution became the central response to sanctions, moving from slogan to industrial policy. The Ministry of Industry and Trade embedded this approach in its technological sovereignty program, targeting complete domestic localization of transport production. Locotech Service, a major RZD partner, reported that imported components for locomotive maintenance fell to just 1% by 2024. Precision fasteners, rubber seals, electric relays, and lubricants once bought abroad were now produced locally. Ural Locomotives took full control of the Lastoshka, or Swallow, electric train platform. After Siemens left, Russian engineers localized traction motors and bogey assemblies and redesigned key systems. RZD confirmed that the maintenance and overhaul of both Lastochka and Sapson fleets were now performed domestically with Russian or Eurasian substitutes. Maintenance facilities like Bryansk Engineering Plant and Metro Wagonmash assumed tasks once handled by Western service firms. RZD rebuilt diagnostic and control software that had relied on Siemens architecture. 
By late 2024, new maintenance procedures and warranties were standardized despite earlier quality problems in 2023. Adaptation brought resilience but also stress. Overproduction, repair bottlenecks, and technological gaps remain persistent challenges. A fresh imbalance appeared with an oversupply of open-top gondola wagons, or polugoni. RZD's 2025 reports showed inventories up to 40% above actual need. In the Urals and Siberia, unused wagons stood idle in storage depots. RZD responded by proposing limits on gondola output and incentives to produce grain hoppers and other specialized types. At the same time, maintenance activity declined. Capital repairs dropped more than 50% year-over-year by mid-2025. Shortages of steel cores and bearings at Tever and Tagel depots caused long turnaround times. Observers warned this could reduce reliability and increase failures on major roads. The greatest obstacle remains technological. Domestic producers still struggle to master advanced traction converters, insulated gate bipolar transistors, and complex automation modules. Many locomotives built after 2023 use simplified systems that consume more energy. Engineers call them backward-compatible survivals, waiting for better replacements. Large financial restructuring followed as Western-linked facilities were transferred to Russian control. Contracts were rewritten, logistics redirected, and debts assumed. Firms such as Transmash Holding and Locotech spent months under state supervision adjusting ownership and supply structures through Rostec. By 2024, once localization reached stability, new industrial projects began. Euro Locomotives positioned itself as a fully Russian high-speed train manufacturer with complete in-house production. Its research teams, working with defense institutes, started developing self-driving control systems and permanent magnet traction motors. Ural Vagonzavod announced plans to boost wagon production by one-third by the end of 2025. The company is focusing on new generation models, including gondolas with 27 to 30-ton axle loads and cryogenic tank carriers aimed at Asian markets. Its design bureau in Nizhny Tagil is working on high-capacity wagons adapted for Eurasian rail corridors extending through Kazakhstan and China. Transmash Holding, meanwhile, has turned its focus to digital transformation. It began integrating microprocessor-based control and telemetry systems into rolling stock to extend service life and reduce delays. Russia has also created regional industrial clusters in Sverdlovsk, Bryansk, and Kaluga. These clusters unite metallurgy plants, wagon foundries, and electronics factories into single supply chains for RZD. The goal is to maintain steady production under future sanctions and ensure both efficiency and redundancy. From 2024 onward, production priorities shifted from quantity to specialization. Heavy-duty wagons and tank cars with optimized load factors became the focus instead of standard designs. The Institute for Transport Problems of the Russian Academy of Sciences noted that gondola and tanker production slightly recovered, but container platforms and hoppers continued to fall. Changes in freight traffic patterns also reshaped manufacturing. RZD now prioritizes the Eastern Polygon route, linking Siberia, the Far East, and China, as trade with Europe declined. Rolling stock designs were updated for heavier axle loads, corrosion resistance, and longer service intervals. This regional pivot revived metallurgy and casting industries that feed the rail sector. Between 2024 and 2025, firms such as OMK Vyksa, Chelyabinsk Forge Press Plant, and Murom Teplovoz reported steady new orders. Yet Russia's export competitiveness remains limited. Many wagons cannot be certified outside the Eurasian Economic Union because older models still contain Western-made parts. Even as output improves, Russia faces a technological gap, while Chinese manufacturers strengthen their global lead in freight wagon exports. Government policy remains the backbone of the railway industry's survival. 
The Industrial Development Fund and the National Wealth Fund provide long-term loans at low interest for modernization and R&D. Russian Railways, the largest client, continues to issue multi-year orders worth hundreds of billions of rubles to sustain production. The Ministry of Transport's strategy for railway development to 2035 sets clear goals, full digitalization of new rolling stock, 95% localization, and a self-sufficient parts ecosystem. The railway sector is now viewed not just as transport infrastructure, but as an instrument of national technological sovereignty. Under this model, the state acts as both investor and stabilizer. Plants that once depended on Siemens or Alstom now rely on state-backed suppliers and financing. This ensures continuity but limits exposure to competition, reducing the drive for genuine innovation. By 2025, technological sovereignty had become a defining principle of Russia's industrial policy. The railway sector serves as a testing ground for that idea. Research centers, such as the All-Russian Institute of Railway Transport, are developing AI-based logistics systems, predictive maintenance tools, and stress simulations for bearings. Cooperation through BRICS offers new opportunities. Russian companies are negotiating partnerships with India and China to obtain traction control technologies and co-develop signaling systems. Moscow's goal is to fill the gaps left by Western suppliers using parallel imports and joint development. To meet the demand for skilled workers, engineering universities in Nizhny Tagil, Samara, and Bryansk have launched specialized programs in mechatronics, railway electronics, and materials science. This aims to rebuild the talent base lost when Western cooperation ended in 2022. By mid-2025, the Russian railway production sector presents a complex picture. It has neither collapsed nor fully recovered. Independence has grown, but efficiency and technology remain constrained. Import substitution succeeded mainly in basic components, metals, and consumables. However, advanced microelectronics and digital traction systems still lag behind. Even so, the industry proved its resilience and ability to reorganize under pressure. In the end, Russia had to choose between technological integration and industrial survival. It chose survival through sovereignty. Factories now build fewer advanced trains, but production remains steady under domestic control. The next decade will show whether this model leads to innovation or remains a defensive strategy. Overall, Russia achieved industrial continuity after 2022, though at the cost of modernization speed. The railway sector today reflects both the resilience and the limits of an economy rebuilding itself amid unprecedented constraints. If you find this video informative, please like, subscribe, and share. Please also take our membership to encourage us.